fellow artists. Today we are going to be creating a puzzle pumpkin inspired by the artist Robert Rauschenberg. Today you're going to need several things, a painting paper, a canvas, a paper towel, a brush, and notice that we have a larger one that has a flat tip. We're gonna be using that to create a special texture on our canvas today. You have a half a bowl of water to wash your brush out in between colors. And then inside of your egg carton, you have two shades of blue, dark blue and light blue, white, dark green, and light green. The first thing you need to do is flip over your canvas and on the bottom left-hand corner, very clearly with a pencil, please write your name. In the lower right-hand corner, please write the name of your class. While you still have your pencil, you're gonna find the midway point of your canvas, but then come down just about an inch or so and draw a straight line all the way across. So my upper half is just a little bit bigger than my lower half. You are done with your pencil now, you may put it away. We're gonna be working on top of our painting paper to protect the tables. We have our brush and notice that I haven't dipped it in the water because we're gonna use a dry brush today since acrylic paints are already wet. We also have a large flat tip brush because we're gonna use it to create some texture on our canvas. In your egg carton, you have a dark blue, a light blue, white, dark green, and light green. We're gonna start with blue today. We're gonna start with the darkest uh, blue right here. We're gonna dip and wipe on the side. And all I want you to simply do today is use your brush to kind of poke at your canvas. Now, don't be too aggressive so that it ruins the brushes, but that's why I chose these brushes. They're a little bit harder of a bristle. They're not gonna break as easily as like a small brush like this would. Also, this is too soft of a bristle, so you wouldn't be able to get the same texture. That's why it's important to choose the correct brush. We're gonna keep dipping in the dark, wipe, and you're gonna continue to do this until your sky area is pretty much covered. And it's okay to leave some white spots here and there. Um, you just don't wanna leave too many. When it comes to painting on that line, go right on it. So not under it and not over it, but right on it. Nice texture, just like Robert Rauschenberg used in his artwork. If you have any areas that are really dark when you're done, just dip right over those and spread that paint around because you don't want your sky to look too dark. That almost looks black. So just dip in those spots and spread out your paint a little bit. Now, if you've noticed, I've covered most of my canvas, but it is okay to have a little bit of white showing through here and there. We're gonna rinse our brushes, so give it a nice firm swirl in the water. Wipe it. Do that twice. We're gonna take our napkin and just wipe the extra water out. I used the dark blue for my sky. If you would prefer to use the light blue for your sky, you may do that, but you're only picking one or the other. The next color that you're going to be using on your sky is the white. Again, you're gonna dip and wipe. Now what you're going to do is simply take your brush and do another coat right over the sky. Try to get some of those white spaces that you left over. And what's gonna happen is because the paint is still wet, the white and the blue will mix together and make a very cool textured shaded sky. Before you take a dirty brush and dip it back in the white, you don't have to wash it, but I do want you to wipe most of the paint out before you dip and wipe again. If you look at mine, I purposely left some nice white areas. There's about three of them, one, two, three. Because when you look at the sky outside, because of clouds and shadows and different things, the sky is not usually just one shade of blue. There's gonna be some dark areas, some medium areas, and some light areas. So it's okay to leave a little bit of your white unblended because it will actually make your sky look more realistic. 
Now that you're done with your wipe, rinse out your brush again, wipe, and do that twice. Dry your brush. If at any time during this project you need a new napkin, you can feel free to do that. You can also fold it in half, and now you have kind of a dry section on the back side. We're gonna switch now to our green colors, and I actually want you to start with the lighter green first. Dip and wipe. And we're gonna repeat the same process. Get right up to that skyline. You can even go right on the blue a little bit. It'll do some nice blending for your grass. Making sure that our brush still has a good hair day though. I don't have a lot of bristles poking different directions. I'm just kind of taking the brush and tapping at the canvas, making sure that I'm being nice to the brush. Now that you've covered all of your grass with the light green, again, I need you to rinse and wipe two times. Now I would like you to dip into the dark green, dip and wipe. And grass has different colors to it as well. So some of your dark is gonna show through and some of your light is going to show through. You can already tell that this makes a really cool texture. It looks like grass. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush one last time. For cleanup today, you are going to shut your egg carton I will collect those, so just leave them at your desks. You're gonna take your dirty brush and put it upside down in the bowl of water that's by the sink so that it can take a bath. You're going to dump your dirty water down the sink, give the bowl a clean rinse, and then leave it upside down in the dish strainer. Your project, painting paper and all, goes on the drying rack to dry. Your dirty napkin can be used to wipe up your table of paint before you throw it away. After you are all cleaned up, you will notice that you do have paint on your fingers. You may use one pump of soap to wash your hands and two napkins to dry them. If we run out of time during art class for you to wash your hands, you can tell that the paint is already dry and we can take care of that with our classroom teachers.